Today we're going to be having a look at what's inside this case. These guys, the DZO Gnosis Full Frame Macro Primes. I've been using them for the last few weeks and they are pretty epic. So let's have a look at them. Welcome, I'm, I'm Ben, I work as a wildlife cameraman. I film on, on various projects uh, for all the big producers, BBC, Netflix, Apple. I've done lots of, lots of work making wildlife documentaries. I have recently done a fair bit of macro and detail filming. Uh, I worked on Green Planet, which had loads and loads of details of, of the plants. I've recently started working on another BBC series um, where I'm filming quite a lot of small things. And I heard about these lenses and I reached out to DZO and I used them on my last shoot. As there's not a huge amount out there about these guys, Thought I'd I'd make a quick review video before I uh, before I send them back. Let me talk you through them. If you get the full set, this is how it comes. There's a three lenses, a 32, a 65, and a 90. They come with three different mounts. I've got them with EFs on, but they came with PL mounts, which are, are here, and there's also the option of LPL mounts. Uh, so really easy to swap them out. They come with the screwdrivers in here to do it. Nice little um, precision uh, hex uh, drivers, uh, hex screws. There's shims for making the scale on the lenses is, is correct. There's rods um, for the lenses if you're using support on 19mm bars. Um, there's warranty information and um, stickers for the um, lens cap and then the spare mount, PL mounts. The case comes with everything that you need to get going really to film close-up things on a wide, a standard and a, a tally lens. Let's, let's get them out and have a look. This 32, that's the 90 and the 65. They all weigh about a kilo and a half, so three and a bit pounds. They are a beautiful solid metal construction. Um, they feel they feel solid. A standard size prime, so they've got a hundred and fourteen millimeter front diameter, so they'll take a normal mat box. Um, they have of course, the standard um, toothing for the follow focus and for the, um, the iris. The really cool thing about them is just how close they focus. So this 32, if you had a matte box on it, you would be able to focus on the back side of the ND filter. You can literally focus there which is quite amazing. It feels, it feels really cool when you, uh, when you have something just right, right up there. The, uh, the other two are slightly further away. Um, the, uh, the, fo the close focus on here is about 24 centimeters from the, uh, the sensor plane. So it's out here somewhere. And then on the 90 is slightly further away, but you're still really close. In terms of magnification, the 32mm will magnify it one to one, so real size. The 65 will do 1.33 to one, 30% larger than, than life size. The 90 will do 1.5 to one, uh, so 50% bigger than real life really. They have all those, those details on the, uh, on the side of the lenses. These lenses come in both metric and imperial, so they uh, cater to the Americans as well as the rest of the world. They're just a solid, solid lens. On, on the barrel of the lens, you have the iris, which goes from 2.8 to f22, or t22, sorry. It's really nice having that 
um, being able to let that light in. However, especially at close distances, the depth of field is so shallow, so you're going to be stopped down to probably five, six or eight minimum. The focus, however, is 300 degrees, so it goes all the way around, and that really, really helps for the fine, fine details of pulling focus at those macro um, macro distances. It means that you can be really, really precise with where you put the focus. The other thing that is really useful on these guys is the lens support. So it's a 3 8 mount and any time you're doing macro, I would always try and recommend having the lens supported. Let's get them on the camera and, uh, and have a play. I think I'm in focus. I'm, I don't know, a fist length from the lens. So, what, 10 centimeters from the lens? And uh, on the 32 millimeter, um, I'm at f5.6. And you can see that at this distance, depth of field, depth of focus is pretty damn shallow. My forehead is resting on the on the lens. One of the negatives of having a full size macro lens like this, it gets in the way and it shades the area that you want to film. So, especially on the, the wide angle, the 32, where your subject can be right up at the front of the, the lens. The, the width of the lens actually shades the, um, the subject quite a lot. That is one thing to bear in mind. If you are shooting close up to the lens, you need to have a way of getting light right up in on your subject. This is the 65mm, as with the 32, there's a bit of focus breathing. But yeah, there is, is a bit of breathing. Um, It's an amazing lens, this, uh, and I'm quite enjoying playing with it. just filmed my eye, big close-up of my own eye. That far away from the lens, um, quite tricky getting light in, even with this big soft lantern nearby, right next to the lens. This is at about four or five feet away. It renders the, uh, the background quite nicely, and I think the drop-off from in focus 
to out of focus is pretty smooth and pretty nice. Feels like a quite a nice smooth smooth drop off. Again, a bit of breathing. Editing Ben here. It appears I've gone through a whole review video without actually talking about how sharp the lenses are. And they're bloody sharp. They're really, really tack sharp. And that's all I'm going to say. They, they're great. They're, they're really, really sharp. So, um, back to the review. Yeah, pretty nice uh, flares going on there. It handles it nicely. I, I quite like the purple in the uh, in the flares. You get a little milkiness, but the uh, it feels quite nice, and I think fairly similar, fairly well controlled in relation to the uh, to the other two um, lenses. Hopefully, that has shown just how how nice a set of lenses they are. They're, they're pretty big, but they're solid and professional. They have really nice fall off on, uh, on the out of focus bits. The 300 degree um, rotation on the barrel means that they are great and really fine for focusing. Um, it does mean that most of the barrel is dedicated to the distance from from the lens to about a meter and so it does make focusing between a meter and infinity really quite precise on this one uh, from there to there is infinity it's not very much at all so that that is one of the downsides of them but also one of the things that gives them their character is that they're a macro lens that can focus at infinity. When you're working beyond about a meter, you're working in the last little bit of that, that lens. They are predominantly designed and intended for macro filming. Colors seem to be pretty even bit through, the, uh, through the three lenses. Wide aperture of 2.8. Useful, although at macro distances, it's unlikely that you'll be uh, filming like that, but it does mean that for a bit further away, you have a nice, nice soft backgrounds. So it's good to have that that option. There is a little bit of breathing, but to be honest, the range that these lenses are working over, you would expect some breathing because the um, the focusing element is doing a lot of work. It's moving quite a, a, a long way. It wasn't massive. I've seen considerably worse in other lenses. Their size is is a a benefit but also a negative. It means that they fit well into a production sort of uh, workflow that they'll be a similar size to other lenses that will be on set but you can't get light in when you're really really close because the the lens blocks the light especially on the 32 where you can film so close to the lens. They're about 5,000 dollars each so I think the full set is about fifteen thousand dollars they're not cheap they are all very similar and have a similar characteristic and so if you're looking for a set of macro lenses that will have continuity between when you swap lenses depending on the shot sizes depending on the um, the use that the, that you want for them, then I'd say that they are a set of professional macro lenses that that work really well for close focus for for macro filming for anything sort of closer than about a meter and a half from the lens. That's that's where these lenses shine. I'm I'm very glad I've got to use them, and I will definitely use them on future shoots. Yeah, overall a thumbs up and hopefully this has been a, a useful review. 
If you want to know anything else about these lenses, then do feel free to drop a comment below. Um, but also, if there's anything else kit-wise or technology-wise that you want to know about wildlife filmmaking, then drop me a message below and I'll either get back to you or I might try and make a video about it. See you next time. Bye.